Hello everyone, welcome back to Belmont's Math and Science Learning Center lecture series on Math 1010 Quantitative Literacy. My name is Brandon Stevens and today I'm here to guide you through the realm of absolute and percent change, both from the ideas of finding absolute and percent change when given two quantities, um, and also using absolute and percent change to find one or the other quantities uh, when it is in fact given to you. So let's go ahead and get started. A thing of note beforehand, um, sometimes you will see absolute and percent difference, um, and there's a, a mild distinction between the two. When you're talking about change, absolute and percent change, it's always in the guise of one quantity changing over time. Um, so maybe it's a rent changing from one year to the next. Um, whereas absolute and percent difference, you're comparing the size of two different quantities. Um, but for all intents and purposes, the calculation is exactly the same. So I'll be focusing on using the word change, um, but just know that if you come across difference, it's the same thing just uh, in that context of comparing two quantities as opposed to seeing how one quantity changes. So let's go ahead and absolute and percent change, how to find it. Let's say, for example, we're running a pizza shop. Uh, and over the course of one week, let's say we sell 900 pizzas. Um, and then the next week, we sell 1,200 pizzas. And we want to know how much better did we do. Absolute and percent changes are two ways in which we identify, two equation in which we identify how much better we did. Absolute change or total change um, is going to be the one that is probably the most obvious to you. All you do is you just take your new amount and you subtract your original amount. So in this case, you have 1,200 minus 900, which gives you 300 pizzas. Exactly what you expect when you see the word change. It's just how many more did you sell in your new amount as compared to your old amount. Biggest thing to watch out for with this one is always do new minus original, new minus old. You always want to put that new one first to see, to say that you increased your amount by 300. That's the biggest thing to watch out for there. Percent change is a little more complicated, but it basically says, what is the percent increase by what percentage did we increase our output? And the way that we calculate this is by doing first the total change. So new minus original or new minus old. And then we use that, we divide that by our original value or our old value. Basically saying what percentage of our original value is the change. So in this case, we're going to have 1,200 minus 900, divide that by 900, which is going to give us 300 over 900, which gives us 0 0.33, which we can then change into a percent, remember, by taking that decimal, moving it over twice, we have a 33% increase in the number of pizzas sold. That is our percent change for our pizza um, sales. And there we go. That is how you find the absolute and percent change. Now let's go over to our other argument, our other focus for this talk. What happens when you are given the absolute or the percent change? So again, let's go at this from the, the pizza concept. Uh, let's say instead of 900 pizzas, let's say we sell 600 pizzas in our first week. So let's say we are given that the total change 
or the absolute change, if you want to use that phrase, um, is that we increase by 300 pizzas. <laughs> this is pretty obvious, but what is our new cell pizza? You take 600 plus 300, and you get that we sold 900 pizzas in week two. So this would be, if 600 is the original, that would be how we would find our new value. Now let's suppose that we actually had a new value of 600 pizzas. In that case, if we wanted to find our original, we have to take our value and instead of adding, we subtract. And we get that our original value would be 300. So always come at it from the guise of if this is our change, if we have our original, we add it. If it is our new value, if we're given our new value in the total change, we have to subtract, we undo what that change is. Pretty obvious, um, but wanted to go over that because sometimes science get messed up. Now, let's suppose instead of a total change, instead of the absolute change, we're given the percent change. So let's say instead we have an increase of 10% sales of the number of pizzas. How do we find our new value? Let's assume that 600 is our original value. So original value is 600 pizzas. We increase it by 10%. Um, there's actually two ways we can go about it. Um, I'll show you the longer version first and then uh, bring it back to a more condensed version. So if we increase by 10%, what we could do, so for method one, is figure out how many pizzas that's actually going to increase our number by. So we take our value and we multiply it by our percent as a decimal. In this case, remember 10%, we move the decimal over, that'd be 0 0.1. 0 0.1 in this context is referred to as our growth rate. Um, and in this case, that is 60. This is our total change. And then in this case, we can just take the 600 and add on the 60 to get that our new value is 660 pizzas. That's how many we would sell in week two after a 10% increase. Now the second method gets us to the same answer, but we don't have to do two kind of steps. If you remember in the first video when we talked about means, remember we introduced that concept of a growth factor. And so in this case, our increase of 10%, if we wanted to change that to a growth factor, we would move the decimal over 2 to get 0.1. That's our growth rate. And then we would add 1 to that to get 1.1. And remember, that's what we refer to as our growth factor. So what we can then do instead of doing the step with the growth rate and then adding it on the end, is just take our original number of pizzas and multiply it now by the growth factor, by the 1.1. That also happens to get us to 660 pizzas. A very a condensed kind of version by just going straight to that growth factor and then multiplying by that instead of doing the 0.1 and then adding it on. Uh, and there we go. That is absolute 10% change. Uh, now, another thing of note, um, these were all like very real values, like 600 pizzas, um, or maybe it's the number of hours of sleep or the uh, amount of homework or whatever. Uh, let's say instead we were talking about percentages. So maybe we're talking about poverty rates. Maybe we start at 13% and we're going to 11%. Um, when we're talking about absolute change, um, the units for that um, are a little strange because we're talking about like differences in percentages. So the only thing of note there 
is if we were going from 13% to 11%, the total change there is negative two PPS, which is percentage points. But the percent change is not going to be negative 2%. In fact, you could calculate that by doing the new minus old over old and getting 11 minus 13, divided by 15, negative 0 0.154, which if we change that to a percentage, is a percent change of negative 15.4%. So we use this idea of percentage points so that we don't think of it accidentally as a negative 2% change. We think of the percent change as a decrease of 15.4%. Um, and there we go. So hopefully I've changed your mind on absolute and percent changes, and I will see you again next time.